message tonight is about promises, the promises of God. Uh, the title is currency of the kingdom. And the word currency relates to things that are in general use that we can exchange and, and trade, and it has value. And, and if you look at the way currency used to be, uh, it was backed by uh, gold. It was a gold standard currency. And, and that's the way the promises of God are. They're, they're backed by something. They're talking better than gold. They're backed by God himself. And uh, we can draw on that. All of you have promises within you. You're a, a uh, stockpile of promises, a reservoir of promises that God has given you over your life that have become alive to you out of the word of God or what he's spoken to you. And you can draw on those and you can uh, set those promises like a, a, com a, a compass uh, and go in that direction because God uses those promises uh, to refine our journey. He, he invites us to come uh, to be with him. So promises, uh, we need to claim the promises, claim the promises of his presence, claim the promises uh, of his power and his uh, provision. Uh, we're always claiming his uh, promises, claim the promise of his healing. He is the healer. Uh, Claim the promises. So this is about the promises of, of t uh, tonight. And it's that reservoir that we have within us of the things that God speaks to us over our lifetime. And we're going to see that uh, there's a lot that God says about the promises and things that we need to know about them. And we're not going to talk so much about specific promises, but about the, the body of promises that each of us carry, and, and each one is unique and specific. But Can I sing my little song? Okay. Okay. Now, this came up in my spirit as we were uh, compiling this uh, this message and, and studying for this message, uh, and I'm sure that some of you know it. I'm just going to do the, the chorus part of it, but it, it goes like this. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm trading my sickness. Hallelujah. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. You know, there's a, a word that is very prominent right now, and that is trading. And there are many people that are trading, even it's called uh, day trading. Uh, they're trading in their homes and they're, and they're trading back and forth. And I believe that these promises that Brother Fred is, is talking about that we have on the inside of us is something that we can trade with. Hallelujah. Okay. We don't have to put up with sickness. We don't have to put up with pain. We don't have to put up with any type of sorrow, depression, anxiety, any type of condemnation. We don't have to put up with that. We can trade it in and receive what the Lord has for us. Oh, amen. Amen. Uh, what I want you to see from the promises of God that there are an invitation. The promises are an invitation for you to come to God and to walk with him and to labor with him and to uh, bring forth his influence on the earth. So they're very, very important. Uh, and I want Sherry to start with uh, uh, 2 Peter uh, 1, and uh, we won't read verse 3, but what I want you to know from verse 3 is it's an invitation. So he's talking about his promises mm -hmm. here, and they are an invitation to come to him and to co-labor with him. And we're going to continue to develop this over time, but I want you to read the fourth verse and listen about this. I just focus right in there on the promises of God. He has given you magnificent promises that are beyond all price so that through the power of these tremendous promises, we can experience partnership with his divine nature. 
Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. So he's inviting us in. And I said there was something more precious uh, behind the promises of God, more precious than gold. And, and it says it's a price beyond price. You cannot you put a price on it. That's what's backing up uh, the promises of God. And he wants you to partner with him. So he gives you promises to co-labor with him, to partner with him. And we'll develop that further in a moment. But let's look at another verse here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And it says of what the promises are. They're yes in Christ, and amen. we are the ones that add the amen. Amen. They're all amen. yes. Oh, hallelujah. That's good. Sherry. Amen. Go 2 Corinthians one twenty. For no matter how many promises God has made. And some, and some people have estimated that there are more than 7,700. I haven't counted all of them. I haven't stopped long enough to sit down to do that, but more than 70. So regardless of how many promises there are, what is, what is it? They are yes in Christ. And so through him, they are amen. It is spoken by us to the glory of God. Okay, so God is saying, yes, you can have it. Whatever it is, you find the promise, you hear amen, the promise, amen. and you can say, yes, God is saying yes to you. And so what is our response? Our response is, Amen. Amen. We add the amen to it. He says the yes. We say, we add the amen. I agree with it. That's what the amen means. We're agreeing with that promise. He's 7,700. Can you imagine that? For instance, he says yes to healing. He says yes to prosperity. Hallelujah. He says yes to victory. You can have all of those. Amen. And we're responsible for saying amen. I agree with it. Amen. I'm going to do it. And he's inviting you with those promises, all of the promises, he's inviting you uh, into his presence, to come into his presence, to co-labor with you. So you co-labor with him to bring forth his purposes on the earth and to influence the affairs of uh, human beings mm -hmm. according to his purposes. Amen. Now, the promises are just simply the word of God. They're, uh, they're not maybe all of it, but all of the promises are the word and the word that uh, he has spoken to you, the word that he's made alive to you. So it's the promises are the word. And so let's look at uh, Luke chapter one, verse 37 mm -hmm. and out of the trend. Passion translation. translation. Not one promise from God is empty of power. Okay. So that's the word of God. Let's just think about it. But he's saying here now, the promise is full of power to bring itself to pass. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Nothing is impossible with God. Okay, I want Sherry to read this, this verse again. It's in the Passion Translation, and it talks about the promise, but it's uh, the promise is simply oh, the word. It's equivalent. The promise is equivalent to the word, okay? Not one promise from God is empty of power. Nothing is impossible with God. Okay, so he has given you many, many promises, and there are more promises to come, and, and each one of them has enough power within it to bring itself to pass, Hallelujah. and nothing is impossible. The mm -hmm. promises that he gives you, not a one of them is impossible. Mm -hmm. You cannot, whatever looks impossible, it's still possible Amen. when you receive Amen. the promise of uh, glory Hallelujah. to God. Hallelujah. All right? And then let, let's just think, okay, so uh, the promises are the word. They come from the word. They're, mm -hmm. they're equivalent, uh, the word. Okay, so let's let's look at Hebrews uh, 4, 12. And, and what, is the, what do we know about the word? And so this is also going to apply to the promises. Oh, hallelujah. For, For the word of God is living and powerful. Okay, I, I just want to put, okay. ask Sherry to pause here for a moment because I want the promises that God has given you. The body of promises that he has given you over your lifetime, they are living. They are alive. Mm -hmm. They are powerful. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and read there. Sharper than any two-edged <clears throat> sword, piercing even to the dividing of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Okay, so what I want you to see here 
is that they are precious and they are living. You, you've got this body of living promises that you carry around with you that everywhere you go, you've got these promises. You can draw on those promises. Yes. Uh, you, you've you heard them. Right. You, you, you can. Okay. And so if you're ex experiencing a financial difficulty, well, bring forth. He's my provider. God is my provider. Amen. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord is my Hallelujah. provider. Okay. Hallelujah. Now, you can't imagine how many times Sherry and I yes, uh, that's the truth. Uh, quote that verse or other verses. Or if you, you're experiencing sickness, you, you you think about that promise. Let that promise come up. Well, it's a word. It's the word. I mean, Just let I mean, it come I mean, up I mean. and you begin to speak it out of your mouth. And, and it has power within itself I mean. to bring itself to pass. Hallelujah. That's uh, the promises of God. More precious than any gold or silver more pre it's beyond price those the, and that's the reason i say that, that we can begin to trade with them and and there may be other people that need something that you have you have a promise that you can speak out to them and you can change their life and that's where i call that currency because you're using it not just for yourself no not just for yourself but for the people you come in contact <laughs> with, with your family, with your friends, with your neighbors, with other people uh, that you come in contact with, you begin to release those promises that you are a reservoir of that and let, <laughs> let it just come out, let flow out. And it's going to have so much power that it will come to pass. It carries the power within it to bring the promise about. So you mm -hmm. can prophesy over people. You can, you when you see their problems, you see their needs, you begin to take the, what is God has deposited in you. Woo! Deposited Hallelujah. in you. You begin to let it rise up in you. You begin to speak it out. And it's going to have power within itself. It's not your power. It's not your power. It's power within the promise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And Amen. it's not for just private uh, interpretation and private use. No, it can be used over and over again. Oh, glory to God. Maybe somebody needs healing. Well, uh, you can pray for them. You can prophesy over them, prophesy healing over them, whatever they need. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. Let's, let's uh, go on here. I'm excited about about this message as <laughs> he, I always he, as been I always am. Well, we've been excited for for four weeks now. Okay, now let's think about when you have a problem, when there is a problem in your life, God has a solution, and His solution is always a promise. He presents the promise to you. Now you think back in the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. and they. Mm -hmm fell through sin. Adam mm -hmm. and Eve fell. Well, what happened? God brings a promise. Okay, you have a big yeah. problem. People fail in sin, and he's got the promise. Woo, here's the promise. Uh, here's the, the promise. promise is, I'm presenting a redeemer. I'm bringing Woo! a redeemer. Hallelujah. A redeemer lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so the, <laughs> now we just want to think, we want, see in general, we want God just to show up and to just change things. But his solution, see, he has a different way because we're talking about the kingdom of God. He oper his thoughts are above our thoughts. His, his ideas, his plans, they're good. And, and he's got a way to do things. And, and his uh, way of doing things is not just on his own to show up and, and to solve all your problems. What he does, he gives you a promise. Amen. He and gives with, you currency. And with that promise, Hallelujah. you can begin, begin to operate. You can begin to change your life. You whatever it takes, you you can begin to operate. You can begin to trade with that. You begin to trade on that. You begin to set your uh, sail of where you're headed amen, on that amen. promise. You begin to uh, to trade with it. The solution he gives a problem for every so problem. I'm sorry for every problem he gives the Thanks, solution. solution a promise. Amen. Now you just want him to fix everything. Mm. But what he does, he gives you a promise. Now, what is that promise? Well, it's an invitation for you to work with him. 
uh, because mm, it's precious. Mm, mm, mm. See, a lot of people don't consider it to be precious. And they, when they hear a prophetic word or they have a promise, they just put it on the shelf and say, well, we'll see whether it happens or not. But that's not the way it operates at all. Because God, when you have a problem, he gives you a promise, mm -hmm. which is an invitation to work with, with him, him to bring forth his influence mm -hmm. on the earth to change what's going on down here. But it's you working with him with that promise that he gives Amen. you. I want to read this. All right. Hallelujah. Let's read it. In Genesis 3, 15, it says, and I will put intimacy, enmity, okay, okay, hostility, hostile between you and the woman. So he's talking to the devil here. Okay. The devil has tempted uh, Adam and Eve and they have fallen into sin. And now he's coming with the promise of the redeemer. Let's listen. Oh, hallelujah. And this is what it talks about here. The woman. That's the, that's the bride. That's the body of Christ. And between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise your head. Listen to this. And you shall bruise his heel. Okay. So the devil bit uh, Jesus on the heel, but Jesus crushed his head. Oh, I like the word crush. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like the word crush. Some translations say yes, crush. Yes, it's bruise. Yeah. So, so the problem was sin crept in. Uh, they sinned. They were they the great fall but god had a solution I mean. his solution was to offer a promise what is the promise it's an invitation to co-labor with him to bring forth god's plan on the earth oh, that's beautiful Ooh, I mean. hallelujah I mean. okay what's next hallelujah that god's promises never fail that is so they are eternal so good heaven and earth will pass away but the word of God will stand forever. His promises do not fail. Okay, so he's given you promises, promises after promises. And if you don't have enough, go look at the Bible. Read the Bible. Listen to the Holy Spirit. See what the Spirit brings alive mm -hmm. to you. You ought to be you ought to be full to overflowing with the with, with the, the promises, promises of, of God. God. And the promises of God do not fail. Now Joshua said it. He said it once and he said it again. So he said it in Joshua verse. Uh, chapter 21, 21, and then he said it in chapter 23. The promises of God do not fail. Mm -hmm. Okay, read these two it verses. It says, not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. And that's you and I. All came to pass. And then Joshua 23, 14. Behold this day I am going the way of all the earth. And you know in your all of your hearts and in all of your souls, that not one thing has failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spoke concerning you. All have come to pass for you. Not one of the words have fallen to the ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There it is, a double witness on it. The promises do not fail. But you might want another witness here. What about Solomon? What did Solomon write about in 1 Kings 8? Verse 56, blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel according to all that he promised. Hallelujah. Did you know that rest is one of the promises that you can enter into his rest? Hallelujah. Now, that, that doesn't mean to be lazy and sleep around all the time. No. What does that mean? It means to trust the Lord. It means that you can enter into the rest of the Lord. You don't have to worry. You don't have to struggle. You don't have to be uh, fretful. Uh, hallelujah. So this is, a, this is a promise. According to all that he's promised, there has not one fail, not word failed of all of the promises. Not one has failed. Which he promised through his servant <clears throat> Moses. Oh, hallelujah. It's the same today. His promises do not fail. You can, Hallelujah. when he gives you a promise, it will not fail. Now, why do some people not see their promises being manifested? Well, they are conditional. Amen. They are conditional. There's some conditions mm, associated mm. with it. Let's just think about a few of them. For example, uh, John 15, 7. If, now here's the condition. If, if you abide in me and if 
my and words, words about to you. you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, see all those ifs? Those are conditions. We, we, we have to meet the conditions. See, in, uh, uh, then in John 11, uh, Jesus told uh, Mary, if you, uh, no, to Martha, said, if you, you believe, believe, you will see the glory of God. And uh, mm -hmm. one of my favorites, uh, so that's the condition. If, when you see those ifs, those are the conditions. So he's going to give you promises, but the promises are conditional upon your obedience to what he's telling you to do. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, one of my favorites is, of course, Mark eleven twenty three. And here we have to, if you don't doubt in your heart, and if you believe what you say, mm -hmm. then you mm -hmm. can speak to a mountain and it will be uprooted Rooted and, and cast, cast into, into the, the sea. sea. But what are the conditions if you believe in your heart what you say and if you don't have any doubt those are conditions and so why uh, do you not see some of the uh, promises coming about well because there are conditions and we have to meet the conditions and it's all related to obedience now I like uh, 1 John 5 uh, verses 14 and 15 it says if you ask anything if you ask anything according to my will it shall be done uh, and uh, you know that I'll hear it and if you if you know that I hear it then 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 you have it oh hell so there are some conditions then you will have what you ask for so there are plenty of conditions and so we a lot of people are not going to meet those conditions for one thing they don't realize how powerful how precious the promises of God are and they're not meeting the conditions, and the conditions relate to obedience. And so remember, what are the promises? He's inviting us. It's an invitation uh, to come and to co-labor with him. He could easily just change everything, but he's wanting us to co-labor with him. Oh, well, glory to God. You know, I think about one promise that, that I know I have been uh, trading with, and and that is... Uh, if I continue to be faithful to the Lord, that my whole household will be saved. Okay. Hallelujah. I can trade with that. I can take that to the bank. And we Hallelujah. Can, and we can share it with other people. Amen. We've got something Amen. we can share. Now, the, the next thing, the next point I want to make is that there is a tree of life associated with the promises. The promises, see, uh, when the promises come to pass, it's going to be a tree of life, it says. But some people are not receiving the hope hmm. that they're wanting. So they, the hope is related to the promise. And, and Proverbs thirteen twelve says, uh, hope deferred. Now that means if you've had disappointment or you've had bitterness, or you've had unforgiveness, any of these things, hope deferred makes the, the heart, heart sick. sick. Okay, so if the promises that, that God has given you, but you haven't seen them come to pass, a lot of people get disappointed. They, they turn get to bitterness and, and they have unforgiveness and they even uh, condemn God and, and, and speak evil of God. Uh, and and then there's a condition. There's something that happens as a result of that. It says uh, talks about sickness. Now that word sickness, uh, I, I looked at it and and it it's translated many different ways across the Bible. Uh, it's talked about sickness, yes, mm -hmm. but it also talks disease, infirmity, mm -hmm. pain, grief, sorrow. Oh, wow, all of those wow, things wow. come as a result of what? Well, of not working the promise, not believing the promise, not receiving the promise, not being mm -hmm. obedient to the conditions of the promise. Mm -hmm. and, and so then that they're not seeing it. So they get bitter. They get, uh, they have unforgiveness in their heart and it might be towards God. They might be con uh, pointing a finger at God or, or condemning God and saying, well, you didn't do what you promised, but you have to remember it's an invitation when he promises it's an invitation for you to come alongside him, to co-labor with him, to bring forth his purposes on the earth. And I'm talking about his purposes because the end of this verse, and I'll have Sherry read it again, but, but I, I want you to see that it, it, when your promises, when you receive your promises, when your promises are fulfilled, it's a tree of life. Mm, okay? Hallelujah. So what, Hope what, deferred. what that means, before, before you read it, 
I want to explain what that tree of life. Uh, and and in Genesis chapter three, after Adam and Eve had f fallen through sin, uh, God said, I, "Now they're going to be like us, and I I can't let them." eat of the tree of life because they will live forever. So the tree of life represents eternity, mm, eternal mm, purposes. Mm. So our promise, see, he gives you promises that are going to be aimed toward your eternal purposes. Between, mm, and so he keeps giving you promises and promises. And, and maybe we're going in this direction for a little while and he gives you promises and and uh, you, you need know you need to refine your pathway and you keep moving this way. So all those promises that he's giving you, uh, they're, they're going somewhere. They're aimed somewhere. There's a direction in those. Mm -hmm. Those are giving you clarity and direction on your eternal purposes. But if you're not taking hold of them, if you're not obedient to what God is telling you to do, if you're not believing for those promises to come to pass and, and they don't manifest when you think they ought to manifest, then people get caught up in disappointment and bitterness and unforgiveness and, and their body gets sick and uh, they have sickness and disease. And, and so if, if you are sick, I'm quick to pray for you. But let me tell you, you've got to get down to the root of the problem. I mean, if the root of the problem is that God has given you some promises and you didn't consider them to be valuable enough to co-labor with him, or, or you didn't, you weren't obedient to do what he was telling you to do, and you didn't see the manifestation of it, and you got disappointed, and you got bitter, and you became un, uh, unforgiving uh, and pointing towards God and, and saying it was his fault that things didn't happen the way you thought they were going to happen. But let me tell you, there is nothing wrong with God. And God hasn't made a mistake. And when he gave you a promise, he, he didn't make all a mistake. Good things. Everything that didn't happen, it's going to be on your shoulders. It's not on God. Oh, God forgot something or God uh, didn't do something. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. But we've all got to deal with disappointment. We have to know how to deal with disappointment. If we get bogged down, we don't point our finger at God and say he's the problem. God is never the problem. Amen. Let me say that again. God Amen. is never the problem. If there's something amiss, if something's not going the way you want it to go, look in your heart. What, what's going on in my heart? Uh, we've got to look on the inside of us because he has invited us to co-labor with him to bring forth the fulfillment of the promise. And the mm -hmm. promise itself has enough power to bring itself to pass if you just stay out of its way and don't hinder it. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 And, and then... Do you want me to read this again? Okay, let's read it again. I think it's so important. Let's read Hope it Hope deferred. Two, two different things here. Hope, Hope deferred. That means the promise hasn't come yet. Hasn't been fulfilled. Makes the heart sick. Okay. Oh, the sickness. But when the desire comes, oh, hallelujah. when it's manifested, it is a tree of life. So the promises that God gives you all relate to your eternal oh, purpose. purpose. And so we need to be walking in those lines. He's giving those to you to inspire you, to motivate and you, to He's encourage giving, you, to encourage you to keep moving forward towards your divine purpose and divine destiny. Destiny. Hallelujah. You know, my husband here, he lives and moves and has his being in purpose and destiny. Yes, that's right. He gets up in the morning thinking about purpose. In the middle of the day, he's talking about purpose. In the evening, we talk about purpose. Hallelujah. So I'm telling you that purpose and destiny are very important to the Lord, and they're important for you. Amen. And she is so right, because <laughs> these purposes come, eternal purposes come out of the promises. The promise that gives mm -hmm. you those promises to keep you moving in the right direction. And we need to realize how important these promises are. They're going to inspire us, motivate us, to keep us moving in the right direction. Now, uh, there are two other points I want to make. And one is that uh, 
that God wants us. He wants to be revealed as a father mm, to mm, the earth, mm, mm. to people on the earth. Woo, hallelujah. And Jesus came for that purpose, mm -hmm. to reveal the Father. And all of the other things are just subcategories under the general category of why Jesus came. He came to reveal uh, mm -hmm. God as the Father. See, it's an orphan planet. That oh, wow. People, an plan orphan planet. The people are, oh, wow. plan are orphans. The planet oh, is filled, filled with, with orphans. orphans. And and God wants to reveal Himself mm, as the mm, Father. Father, and Jesus came, and He said, "I mm. only do what I have seen my, my Father, Father do. Amen. I can do nothing of my own." And He said, "I only speak what." I hear the Father say. He was revealing the Father in all of his actions. When he healed a blind man, when he when he caused a lame man to uh, to walk, when, when he, he raised, the, raised dead. the dead, he was showing the Father. He was the, he's is has always been the exact image of the Father. He didn't do anything on his own. He said, "I can do nothing on my own." He came to reveal the Father to us and. In John chapter 20, mm -hmm. verse 21, he gives us our assignment. What do you think our assignment is? Mm -mm. Oh, it's the same as Jesus. So let's read this verse here. John 20, 21. So Jesus said to them, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Oh, hallelujah. I send you, Wendy. Hallelujah. I send you, Re I send you Rebecca. I send, I send you, Wayne and Bernice. I send you. Hallelujah. Just as the Father sent Jesus, he is sending you. And how was Jesus sent? To reveal the Father. Amen. How are you being sent to reveal, reveal the, the Father. Father? How do you do it? It's by the body of, uh, of promises, promises that are deposited in your life, in you, in your over bank account. your lifetime. And you begin to operate on those. And you begin to move in those directions. Amen. amen. You do. And, and so you're focusing on eternal things. It's all about the promises. And the promises is you're acting on those. And the, and the promises are being fulfilled. The promises are being fulfilled. Then you're pointing to the Father. And you're showing people hallelujah. the Father. You're showing the people the Father. Oh, it's hallelujah. The Father's hallelujah. Will to heal. It's the Father's will to prosper you. He's prospered me. Oh, it's, your, it's His will to prosper you. He and wants for you, you to be healed. To be healed. To be prosper. He want. It's His. And, and so you don't just use your words. It's with your life. It's showing your life, and your life is you are prospering. You receive the promises of prosperity. Let's say I'm just using this as an example. You receive the promises of prosperity. You, that's an invitation to come co-labor with him to bring forth prosperity in your life so that you can begin to trade with that. You begin to pour out that to other people and said, oh, this is what the Father has done for me. He, he has prospered in my life. I, I was poor. I, I was, I, I, I was a, a beggar on the earth and, and I, I found the Father. Father found me. He drew me into him. He gave me promises and I co-labored with him and I, I prospered and he'll do the same for you. See, that's the way it operates. And, and he, and the father came into my life and he brought healing into my life. He, he's my healer. And, and, and now he's, he made those promises to me. I co-labored with him. I brought forth healing in my body and, and I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to lay hands on you so that you can be healed from your sickness. And I'll show you how it, uh, how he did it with me and I, I'll help you and I'll, I'll uh, uh, advise you on how you can have hot healing in your life and how you can have prosperity. That's the currency. See, I'm beginning to trade with it and deal with it. And this is my final point. He gave me a promise. He gave me a promise years ago. He said, Freddie, I want you to give away a billion dollars over your, over the life of your ministry. A billion. That's with a B. That's not with an M. So I have traveled all over the earth. That's a promise that he gave me. He all said, over the world. I, I, I give you the billion dollars. It's in your account. Now you begin to, Hallelujah. You begin to pour it out and give it to other people. And, and, and so I have traveled all over the world and I've told this story. I've told this story that he gave me a billion dollars 
to distribute, mm -hmm. not to hoard up, not to, I can't hoard it up. Mm -hmm. Oh, you look at my check account, I, checking mm -hmm. account, my bank account, I can't say, oh, <laughs> I'm going to put a billion dollars in there and I'm not going to give a penny to anybody. <laughs> no, no, that's not the way it works. He, he wants you, he gives you the promise. You begin to deal with the promise. You begin to deal on it. You begin to trade. trade on it. You begin to move in the direction and, and see if I never went out and, and uh, didn't go to Africa and didn't go to uh, Europe and didn't go to ha Central America and South America and across the U.S. If I didn't go there, I wouldn't be fulfilling that promise and it'd be on my shoulders. Yeah. It, I would be responsible for not coming to bed. But when he gave the promise, see, that's his word. I mean, and, and there's enough power in his word to bring it oh, to pass. And, and so it, it's my responsibility to release a billion dollars to the people of God over my lifetime and over my ministry. And if you want your portion of it, and I, I don't know Hallelujah. exactly what your portion is, but I, I've heard people say that after I've released it to them, they've gone into a business where they haven't had a business before, or, or they've got, they've discovered oil on their land or, or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It's what promise God is giving you. You see, this is a part of trading, and that's the currency. He's given me promises. Uh, he has given me a, a bank account. Yeah, we promise. want to give it away. And we want to give it away. We don't, want to, we don't want to hoard up anything. We want, Hallelujah. We want to give it away. So I'm giving away oh, over my God. lifetime a billion dollars. And if you want it, yes, you want your portion yes, of that me my billion, portion, Lord. then I just want you to raise your yes, hand and I'm going to release it to you. This is the way I've done it year after year after year. I'm releasing. I'm operating in the currency of the kingdom. I'm releasing uh, the money that God has put in my account for you. I'm releasing it to, to you, you by oh, the hallelujah. power of the Holy Spirit and by, in the Jesus, name of the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. I release it to you. You believe and receive your portion, portion of that billion dollars and it's you, in Lord. your account I now receive my and portion, it's your Lord. responsibility in the name to take of it Jesus. and do what God is calling you Hallelujah. to do. He's wanting you to co-labor because he's given you a promise today that you hadn't had before. He's giving you a promise. He's inviting you to co-labor with him to bring forth his purposes on the earth.